guys how's it going welcome back so this is going to be another kind of a hobby vlog update here and this is one of the little pigmen i was working on in the last video i was at the stage of just about starting on some green stuff details and as you can see here he's all finished up nice and um you know grimy and dirty and that so i'm pretty happy with this guy and his nice little piggy face there and uh, not exactly the smoothest detail but i think i can get away with it just because of he's a uh, you know a dirty little pig man so this guy is the other one as well. This one, for some reason, I remember to put nipples on this one and forgot on the first one. But yeah, these guys were a lot of fun to make and painting up the, the skin tones and putting then the oil wash on top of them was really, really satisfying. Then I picked out the the little bit of texture I put into the skin. Now, you can notice here on the back, I was a bit lazy. I didn't even notice that I didn't put texture here, so it doesn't look great. But you can't, you know what I mean? You live and learn and these are the first, well, not first, but some of the first proper little 28mm guys I made from scratch and it sort the bit of a rust effect that I put on that the kind of texture from that I got from um Bill making stuff video where he was talking about kind of putting on this kind of this textured rush rust and it, one of his different rust effects kind of that he has uh, so if you want to check him out he'll give you some good tips but yeah really happy with these guys and they have a I don't know I always say but a lot of character I think for for what they look like for the for their scale they look like nasty, you know, dirty pig men with their little wiggly tails out the back. I don't know. They're a lot of fun to make and um, the combination of using the Palmer clay, the Super Scopey and then the green stuff on top for the details, I think really worked out. So I'll just you, show you some of the other stuff I finished up recently and then I'll show you some of the uh, work in progress bits and bobs. So this is a, a goose, I suppose, a big goose that I'd put a little bit of green stuff on just his um, his beak there to give him some kind of teeth. And then gave him some angry eyebrows, just to make him that a little bit more mean looking. Yeah, that side looks a bit better. And then on his base was just a normal kind of texture job that I usually do. But he's also got these two little turnip guys. So uh, I kind of did that. I don't know what these guys were originally. They were going to be some of my little hedge folk. But um, they turned into little turnips because I've been looking at, if you've been on Instagram and that kind of thing, the turnip 28 mil um, kind of aesthetic and and you know the texture and everything that they use and though that kind of style are really grimy and it's a lot like foliage and, and that kind of thing in the mini so it's really interesting but i was like that kind of matches in with my my head folk you know so that this guy i don't know this is one of my kids toys and i just i robbed them and there's just a lot of texture in it like you know what i mean it's not too bad for for a toy and with some dry brush and everything really quick it looks quite well so that's the big kind of giant go uh, goose i suppose another quick one i'll get through the guys like i said that i finished up here this is a white uh kind of albino gorilla that i finished up from reaper miniatures that came in one of the kickstarters this is when i was looking at Frostgrave, and i bought a few more books for it there recently got them for father's day there today so um that's pretty sweet so this is one of the the monsters and i said hey look i have this gorilla i may as well paint them up and use them for something but yeah, not a crazy paint job, but like, you know, it suits the purpose. These guys are actually quite weird. These are Skaven, right? That my little brother has a 3D printer, but it's the, the older kind of 3D printer, if that focus. There you go. And uh, the one with the filament in it, is it? SD? I'm, I'm trying to think of the term, but yeah. The filament comes in a, on a wheel and it kind of, you can really see the, la the layer lines, basically. It's not the, the resin ones. Uh, people know what I'm talking about but yeah these guys were pretty rough when he gave them to me and he was like look take them like I'm not going to do anything to them and so I was messing with them I was kind of putting liquid green stuff I was putting a uh, mod podge on them just to kind of see how it would work with taking away the the layer lines and then eventually they just turned into these weird creatures there's some kind of it looks like some kind of feces or poo demon or poo creature if that's uh, as graphic as I'm going to get with it with all these kind of slimes connecting and these are just bits of little bits of um wire and bits of long flock that i have this long grass flock that i've stuck together to make them look really goopy and kind of that they're stuck together and stringy and stuff and they've been coated in mod podge and that just to strengthen them and kind of i don't make it look like they're dripping and sliming off each other and then the paint job is as simple as possible you know a brown with a lighter brown and then the eyes had to be yellow um i don't know if it's a reference to sweet corn if, if you're going to use your imagination with that one but 
yeah I don't know they're kind of cool they look kind of rat like still which makes sense because it's a sewer and that kind of thing but I took their tails off because they were just going to break anyway you know um, you see in the background that's that hill I was working on last time it's just, a, it's just a hill with some flock on it it's nothing crazy this is um, a really quick build this is a, a, in my bits box in my toy bits box I had a tail of a dinosaur toy that at some point I had taken off I think it was for a guild build off tabletop crafters guild build off there years ago at this stage but he stuck it on his base and he's this big worm that comes out of the ground so you'll see he's kind of breaking out of the ground here and because it just had really nice texture in it and I just gave him I think I had extra green stuff so he has this weird kind of mouth and then on the top he's got a nose so he's not got any eyes so the idea is like the PCs be like whatever there's there's a scenario where this is a nose sticking out of the ground a purple nose and that's the the nose of this big worm here so that from there you know whatever chaos ensues whatever you want to say but I don't know it's just a weird creature and I thought like the texture works really well it's really hard to photograph because of the angle it makes sense as like it almost looks like a whale diving out of the water that smashes back down do you know if you ever see a big like humpback whale or whatever and they just smack back down and he's going to like dive back in and start wiggling again so just another like I say another weird creature for the chef um, so we'll go on to the kind of work in progress stuff. This guy's coming along. This guy is... I put up some more work in progress shots of the pigmen on my Instagram and that. So this is another one. This is going to be a little piglet. So I'm going to have like the three pigs. Now, well, I don't know. I, I'm kind of getting inspired by uh, fairy tales and stuff like that now. Because, I don't know, it sounds like a really interesting idea for a, a custom Frostgrave um, warband, you know. But anyway, so this little piglet here going to be a right little nasty fecker um and he's going to have a little shiv and i'll make him i might put him in a nappy as well and have his little curly tail coming out because i just i think it'd be funny so he's like he's smaller again like he is a piglet so that if that's he's about 28 mil he's a fair bit smaller you know so he's going to be rolling with those two guys and there's going to be three nasty piggy men but yeah and then putting a little bit more kind of effort in his pose here he's going to be a little bit more like you know running forwards he's going to have the shave in this little hand here i'm not sure what he's going to have here maybe another one another little knife now when i mean shave it's going to be very very crude a little rusty kind of blade and he'll have his little hooves and in a nappy so he's going to be he'll be fun as well now it's kind of a hard one because i didn't would we'll say sketch him out i should have really did a bit of a design first because it just it doesn't look very childlike in a way it doesn't have like the features to make it look oh that's a, a piglet apart from its scale compared to the other guys you know it's not more like the younger features of a pig <laughs> this is a weird subject <laughs> but you know what i mean i just kind of started and said oh i'm just going to make him small um and then as i was making him i was like sure look he could be a piglet then but no he just looks like an evil little fecker um so maybe He's he's just an evil little fecker, that's it. But yeah, he's gonna be a lot of fun. He'll he'll kind of match up with the other two, and he'll have a nice like, start to a war band there. Um, these guys are. This is a frog I had on the go for a good while, and I didn't want to sculpt. Why did this thing ever focus? I didn't want to sculpt his arms, cause it'd be a pain. So I got these arms that I had in the base box. I think they're from like Mantic Orcs or something. So he's got these mad chunky fucking, what would you call them like? tier 6 World of Warcraft looking shoulder pads here uh, shoulder what are they called? pommels? I'm not sure whatever all the you know space marines have them so he's going to have this um, this big I'm thinking maybe a trident and maybe a net here as well if I can figure out how to do a net but yeah he's going to be some kind of frog warrior and I sculpted up his legs now the anatomy is not 100% either but at the same time it's not meant to be I think it'll work when it's all done. He's got this little like chain mail. There's this little bomb as well. I always seem to be sculpting bombs. Um on on uh, on these creatures, but yeah, he's gonna be he's gonna be funny looking and weird kind of proportions and everything, but I think I think it's pretty cool. This guy's coming along really nicely as well. I think he's just about ready for a spray. Uh this guy, if he's no if you can remember in previous videos, he, the base of this guy is a little minifigure of Mewtwo, the Pokemon. Well, that's his legs and then on top uh, the arms are wire and then like sculpted on you know green stuff and that and then the head is kind of built off from there and he's this little kind of friendly troll wizard guy he's got little ball bearings for eyes and kind of every little bit of green stuff I have you know I'm adding on little wraps or little stones or 
little bits of detail so they'll all be picked out um, and I'm thinking what I'm, what stopped me from undercoating them is I was going to make his cloak like really textured with all the kind of foliage I was doing on my, my hedge folk so this is like building on top of that with a bit more effort obviously you can see it's a, there's a bit more sculpting in it and stuff um, and he's got a staff there as well and his little kind of different textures and that on the base um, but I'm kind of wondering will I do something with his cloak or like kind of just sculpt over it with green stuff or what not really sure because it looks all right here but like doing fabric folds and stuff isn't my strong point now in a way that's a cop out because like you're not going to get better at something until you try it but you know that's that's him at the moment I like him I like his kind of smile I like the pose um yeah I like I, I the more I built him I kind of like them more you know just adding little bits and bobs onto him now we'll go on to the bigger things in the back here um, oh yeah, this here first. So this is just a little squig that was with some super scopy. Um and then built on top, you see with the green stuff, obviously here is the green bits. But um looking at it, I really like him and everything. He's kind of more a, a beast snagger squig because of his pig nose. Um but I feel like the toes on this side are slightly bigger than the one on this side, so I'd need to fix that. At least some of them are. And this was one of the ones I might keep and see if I can get a cast and stuff like that because I think it could be could be quite cool. I was going to do like a a, a selection of squigs at one point there, but you know, as as things go, you know, the interest wanes and, and things change up, you know what I mean? But that's just the way it is. Um you see in the back here, Princess Mononoke, the Studio Ghibli movie was added to Netflix a while ago and I watched it with my boy, um one morning and I was like why the hell have I never seen this before this is class like I would have been all about this when I was a kid so what happened was you know things got cannibalized there were some toys and this is what's being created this is a moose uh, figure here it was really cheap it's not like a screlch or you know that German company I'm always talking about in my older videos this is just cheapy cheap figure and uh, if if anybody can recognize this guy before he got his uh, Tom Selleck mustache here this was uh, this is you know Legolas from the Fellowship from Lord of the Rings. So his head got cannibalized as well. Um, so this is kind of this is what it, it's turned into kind of the forest spirit or the spirit of the forest from Princess Mononoke uh, or something based on that. And I'm going to texture up all this kind of hump I'm giving him here with my um, coconut fiber and stuff like that. So it's going to be going to be growing. It might have um, flowers coming out coming out of it and stuff like that. I'll give him a big nice base as well. So that's kind of the idea for him. And um, the antlers on the top were kind of a pain in the hole to make until I realized, wait, I've got liquid green stuff. And that's kind of fantastic for this. So it adds a lot of strength to it. It bolts it out a little bit. It, um, yeah, it, it, it takes away the completely noticeable kind of wire effect. But at the same time, I don't want to get rid of it completely because I don't think it's actually that bad it makes it look kind of wooden to me and it'll be covered anyway to an extent but that's kind of another project on the go at the moment we'll see if it ever gets finished but it's there you know what I mean you see in the back here uh, is when I was messing with polymer clay I was like or, or super scopy I was like you know I want to try and make something bigger I was getting ideas about like garden gnomes and stuff like that so this guy is getting sculpted at the moment and I need to bake him and it's going to be, I'm just going to do rough and ready because I don't know if I'm going to smooth things out because I want the texture to be kind of like gritty and that a little bit deeper. I, I know some people go in, they look at this and be like, oh, you need to put um, clay softener and stuff on it to s see if you can kind of smooth the details out. But I don't know if this thing's going to be outside or, you know, I want it to be able to take a nice wash and then for kind of dirt and stuff to get in there. So it kind of makes it look a bit more natural in the space but I'll just see anyway so this is kind of the first time I've ever tried anything like decently sized with with, with super scope you know and he's got the cool curly hat on top now the same thing again this thing wasn't planned I wanted to make more of a like a disgusting let's say scary little goblin thing but then I was like you know as I was making it I want the hat thing on top kind of turned into this little gnomey hat and he's going to have big ears coming out here and he's going to be chilling against his rock and yeah so i think it'll be cool when he's all done but um i i'll, I'll 
do one, do this one this way, and then if I do another one, I, I'll use the clay softener and just see how it changes the effects and, and that kind of thing. But it's a lot of fun, and as a material, it's pretty sweet just to have the working time is, is refreshing rather than, you know, green stuff and that. And this one I threw together last night is it's just on tinfoil ball, and I only cooked this guy there this morning. And see, there's the tinfoil. And the idea with this, he's going to be one of my little hedge folk, but he's going to be like, we'll say, real life scale as in he's this size about the size of like a ping pong ball maybe and i'm going to cover him in foliage and i might give him little arms and stuff and i want to like you know put him up on a tree or something and just leave him there you know what i mean just do a selection of them and then like people will find him and be like what the hell is this like why are these here but like if i had a tree in my garden i'd put him in in the tree you know what i mean and he's just sitting up there chilling so i'll paint him up all nice he's got like a little fairy face and loads of texture. Same thing again. The texture hasn't been smoothed out or anything because I think it'll take um, washes really well, and it will kind of get dirty and kind of mix in with mix in with the nature that he's put in. So he's going to be nice to paint up. I'm kind of mad to get him done and give him little arms and legs and stuff like that, you know. Which is cool because I could potentially paint this thing up and then make the arms and legs separate. That could be good, actually. Yeah, you know, I'm gonna might mess with some materials, but. Yeah, it's a whole it's a whole new kind of ball game, you know what I mean? And the, the stand here is this co um, clothes hanger that's been completely fecked up, like, just to make it work. But yeah, guys, that's kind of it. That's another update. Um, what do I have to say, I suppose? Yeah, thanks for watching um, and, all, and all the support and bits and bobs like that. Uh, there's loads of channels out there that I do be watching that, you know, don't have tons of views or anything. And I would say, if you are interested in hobby stuff, just to search for it on YouTube because you'll find small channels with guys just doing really cool stuff that you'd be surprised, you know what I mean, that what's out there that mightn't have loads of subs or, you know, people know they're there at all and they're just, they'll have little valuable little tips as well, different ways of doing things, you know what I mean? And um, so I would say broaden your horizons if you're kind of in the hobby space at all and just see what's out there and look at things like not just one material like it's like this polymer clay stuff there's so many guys on youtube doing absolutely amazing stuff with this and i'm literally just like scratching the surface and giving it a go that but what promoted me to do that is watching these guys videos and saying look that doesn't look too bad i can put my own spin on that and have a go you know what i mean so I, that's what i'm saying if if you're looking if you're in kind of a um, slump in the hobby or anything like that just give it a go like it's not too bad price wise and what's the worst that can happen you know so yeah, cheers, you know, feckin' <laughs> like, subscribe, whatever, all that crack, and uh, I'll catch you in the next one, good luck.